Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And I wanted to come on here today and talk about one of my beliefs in fashion and style, and that is that you do not have to spend a lot of money to look stylish. And what I mean by that is, I think that there is this thought that the more expensive an item is, the better, or that designer equals superior. And I don't necessarily think that that's true. I do believe that there is some credence to the saying, you get what you pay for. But I do believe that, especially in fashion, that you can find items and arrange them in such a way that make you look just as stylish as somebody who spent thousands of dollars on their outfit. Now this video is not meant to bash high-end items. Believe you me, I love high-end designer pieces as much as the next person. But I do consider myself to be an equal opportunity fashionista. I love designer pieces, I love high street pieces, I love thrift stores, I love hand-me-downs, and I believe that all of these things can work harmoniously to form a well-curated, stylish outfit that is a reflection of somebody's personality and taste. And so I wanted to come on here and make a video about the five things that I do if I want to zhuzh up an outfit, if I want to make things look stylish without breaking the bank doing so. So if you would like to see my five ways of looking fashionable without breaking the bank, stick around. So one of my mainstays of making my outfits stylish is through the use of bold accessories. A bold necklace, a strong earring, a cool pair of sunglasses. I think these are really easy ways to take an outfit to the next level without breaking the bank. So for instance, with necklaces, even if you have a bunch of simple necklaces, one of the ways that I like to zhuzh up an outfit is by stacking some of my simpler necklaces. So a couple of chokers, a voice box necklace, a chain necklace, a lariat. Each of these things typically simple but stacked transforms it from simple to chic in my opinion. But if you can't be bothered with trying to figure out how to stack a bunch of necklaces in a way that is pleasing to you or if that's just not your style, even just picking that one bold necklace to throw on top of your outfit to add that wow factor works really nicely. So for, as an example, I have this necklace that I love. I got this when I was traveling in Minnesota. It's this necklace made out of bungee cable. So cool. I mean, just imagine just throwing this on top of the simple white t-shirt and going. Um, I never wear this necklace without getting stopped an innumerable amount of times because it's just so cool. And this is not designer. I got it from a local boutique and I would defy anybody to say that this is not an eye-catching stylish piece. Here's another example of a statement necklace, so if you don't really feel like stacking, just picking something that has a really cool and interesting shape and silhouette that you wouldn't necessarily see everywhere, just throwing that on top of your shirt. Again, this is just something else that will draw the eye to whatever it is that you're wearing and just make it more interesting without having to spend designer prices. Another accessory that I love incorporating into my outfits if I just want to zhuzh it up is a statement earring. And these, I love these. I should probably just put one on, but I'm feeling lazy. I got these for maybe $8 at Old Navy recently um, because it was a style that I wasn't sure that I would like or wear often and so I just kind of wanted to try it out and I have to say that I love it. It's just really cool um, and I think it makes an outfit look pretty special without having to spend a bunch of money doing it. Another thing that I envision doing with this is um, having this in, oops, one ear and then having a stutter or some or you know something different in the other ear. There's something about the asymmetry of accessories that I think um, makes them look more stylish. Um, so I don't know, just a simple, so what, that's $4 in one ear and then, you know, some simple cheapy stud in the other ear. And 
immediately your outfit is already looking more interesting without spending all kinds of money doing so. So that's another thing that I like to do. And we all know about my love affair with sunglasses. I mean, what can I say about them? It's just a really fun way to make an outfit pop. So when you're walking around with your simple black t-shirt and your black jeans or leggings, whatever it is that you're wearing, and then you've got this craziness on your face, I don't know. I know that when I have some crazy sunglasses on my face and I'm strutting around outside, it makes me feel really good. And the great thing about sunglasses and sunglass manufacturers is that there are many, many out there and you can find some really, really cool styles without spending an arm and a leg for them. So bold accessories really easy, really fun way to zhuzh up your outfit without needing to take out a loan to do it. Another technique I use is to choose items that have an unexpected or an unusual detail. So classic pieces that have something a little different that make them feel a little bit more special. So for instance, this t-shirt that I'm wearing is just a regular white t-shirt that has this sort of awkward length, almost, it's not even three quarter length, would you call that a half length sleeve, and this lace detail. Otherwise, just a normal white oversized t-shirt, um, but that is made more interesting and more stylish by something that's a little bit more unusual. This is not designer. I got this from Urban Outfitters and I just love it. Um, another thing that I love is the sweatshirt. You know, sweatshirts are simple, they are casual, they are classic, they have been in style for decades. But when I saw this sweatshirt on Zara, I had to have it because of this beautiful fringe detail. Isn't that so cool? It's just so interesting, you know, from the front. I mean, if you're sitting still, you wouldn't necessarily um, see this right away. But as soon as you started moving your arm, and I tend to gesticulate when I talk, uh, you're just mesmerized by this fringe. It's just really interesting. I don't know, it takes a really simple and really classic piece and it makes it a little bit more interesting with just this little detail. So I got that from Zara. Another example of an otherwise classic piece that has a little bit of an unusual detail is one of my favorite outfits or one of my favorite items in my wardrobe and it's a jumpsuit but instead of it being made of a beautiful silk or maybe a lovely cotton or linen of course i had to pick the one that was yellow velvet <laughs> i love this thing i will not be able to show it in this video so i will insert a picture the first day that i wore this out i um got a compliment from somebody who said that I looked like a badass Cinderella and I do not think that I have been paid a higher compliment in my life on something that I'm wearing. Um, so yeah, just that little bit of unusual detail I think um, takes this, you know, otherwise pretty classic shaped, classically shaped wide leg jumpsuit um, to something pretty special and I believe that I bought I know I bought it on sale and it was 20 or 30 bucks from ASOS money well spent and my last item of choosing a classic item with a little bit of an ex unexpected or unusual detail is on a jean jacket and I just got this jean jacket but I tell you the wear I have gotten out of it and the compliments that I've gotten on it well worth every penny I spent on it and it is this acid wash jean jacket with this fantastic pink fur collar that I got from Forever 21. I saw this on somebody I follow on Instagram called Jen G. She's a jewelry designer. And then I saw it again on somebody I follow on YouTube called LB and I'll link both of those items below. And I loved it the first time I saw it, but what am I going to do with that? And then I saw it the second time and was like, why do I not have that? So I got it. And I... <laughs> love this thing. I wear it all the time. It's who would think that something with a pink faux furry collar would be so useful, but it's just beautiful. The detail is stunning. I don't know. It just makes me feel 
a little chicer, this little fur detail to this acid wash. I love that juxtaposition. So I just think that interesting detail just makes it really cool. And um, when I got this, it was, it's on sale now and I got an additional 30% off. So with shipping, I think I spent $37 on this. And I get compliments on it every single time that I wear it. I love this thing. So this is just another example of how choosing things with a little bit of an unexpected or unusual detail to something that's otherwise classic can make your outfit more stylish without having to spend a lot of money to do it. The next technique that I use is by wearing things that are more draped in their fit. Um, so I don't know if anybody else watches runway shows. I do. I love them. And you'll notice that a lot of the items have movement and swish and sway as they're walking down the runway. And that's not to say, I don't mean by draped fit that things should be baggy, but I do think that there's something to be said for something that's a little bit oversized that gives you that billow and that that movement as you're strutting down the sidewalk like you own it. I do think that having things, some items just a little bit oversized can give this effortless chick silhouette that's really desirable. And so I will talk about a couple of examples. One of the things that I will do is if I'm wearing a tight dress, um, I'll wear a loose fitting cardigan over it, just like something a little slouchy to offset um, all of that kaplow in the dress. Or uh, I'll wear flowy pants with a tighter top or vice versa, a flowy top with some tighter pants. And I just think that having that element of, there's something about the billowing and the the flow when you're moving that to me is very appealing. So I'll put some pictures of what I'm talking about um, in this section so that you can see what it is that I'm envisioning because I'm sure that the way that I said it didn't make any sense. I hope it made sense. I'll put some photos. The next thing I want to talk about, the next technique that I use is print mixing. Print mixing is my jam. I love, this is probably my favorite thing that I like to do um, when I'm styling an outfit. When I see somebody walking down the street wearing prints together in such a way that I know that most people wouldn't necessarily even try, I think that person knows how to put together an outfit. Gone are the days that we have to match our scrunchies with our socks. And I think just getting, I think it's more important to put together items that go rather than items that match. Having said that, I do understand that it is a little bit intimidating um, to throw a bunch of different prints together. And so I wanted to talk about a couple of things that I do or that you could possibly do to introduce print mixing into your wardrobe for a really stylish outfit. So one of the things that I think, polka dots and stripes are neutrals. Um, if you have a you know black and white stripe, black and white polka dot, any kind of neutral tone polka dot or stripe, automatically think of them, especially if they're black and white, automatically think of them as a neutral and pair them with whatever color you want, whatever other print you want. Um, I think pair, using those as a neutral and then adding maybe a solid color on top or below that um, is a great way to introduce print mixing into one's wardrobe. Another way to do it is making one print the dominant feature and then having the other print being the um, supporting actor. So if you have a long kind of crazy colored or crazy printed jacket and then you have some um, like a little pair of black and white striped shorts so another thing that you can do is mix prints in which the dominant color is the same so say you have a floral top and um, a paisley pair of pants 
and the dominant color in each is a very similar red, I think those two things can go very nicely together. And you could even break them up with a belt, but I think having two prints, two vastly different prints that share a similar color in common is a wonderful way to mix prints. And then for um, people who are still hesitant, have the extra print be in your shoes. So if you've got a bolder color top um, or sweater or cardigan or something, and then you just have jeans or, you know, a pair of black slacks or, you know, whatever it is that you're wearing, you know, sim something simple and neutral on the bottom, and then you want to, but you do want to um, print mix, pull that, pull in that extra print with a pair of shoes. So I brought an example of what I'm talking about. So for example, I have this um, black and gold stripe cardigan that I've had for years, many years, uh, so it's no longer available. I got this from Club Monocle a long time ago. And you could wear this with a, a black v-neck tee or a black turtleneck, throw this on top, wear some black cigarette um, style pants, um, or trousers, and then wear these as your boots. How cool would that outfit be? So all black outfit, this on top with black and gold, and then you pull in this black and gold paisley um, jacquard boots. I, this is something that I would wear in a heartbeat and none of these items is designer, and it doesn't have to be. I mean, the great thing about this, the print mixing, is that you can get prints for all kinds of prices and mix them as you want. I do not remember what I was saying because I got interrupted by the doorbell, but prints are awesome, and print mixing is a great way to make an outfit look really stylish, and the wonderful thing about prints is that they're easy to find for all price points in thrift stores, in high street shops, anywhere. So don't be afraid to mix prints uh, to sort of zhuzh up an outfit without breaking the bank. And the last thing that I do to make my outfits more stylish for less money is the use of brooches. I have been collecting brooches since I was in my early 20s. I don't know what it is about them. I've always loved them. Um, and so I always keep my eyes open. And if I see one, um, I usually nab it. So one of the things, um, and if you saw my last video, my outfit of the day, one of the things that I like to use my brooches for are my, or is my jean jacket. Um, and so I have it here. And this little jean jacket has an assortment of um, tchotchkes on it and this changes. This one typically stays the same. I like wearing this with this coat um, and this is not this does not count as one of the inexpensive pieces um, but like I got this for maybe 10 bucks at Nordstrom. I think this was 10 bucks this legit pin but I just think that personalizing uh, something like a jean jacket or maybe even a hat um, is a great way to make an outfit more stylish. And speaking of hats, actually, I think I do have one tchotchkeed up. Hold on. I do. Uh, my winter cap has this pin on it. It's my best friend's pin. <laughs> I was going to give it to somebody, but I thought, who is in their right mind is going to want to wear a macaroni or a cheese? Um, and the answer was me. I, I would be the one that would want to wear a macaroni and cheese uh, pin on their winter cap. So let's see if I can get it on. My hair is kind of high up, but this is terrible. Anyway, so you can get the idea. Anyway, my winter caps and even my summer hats on the band, I will often put various different kinds of brooches and pins to decorate them and make them, just set them apart and make them a little bit more stylish. This little thing, these little pins um, were, they couldn't have been more than $12. Um, I have some of my favorite brooches here that I also wanted to just use as further examples. So I love cats. And so I have this little pin with a moving tail that I just think is so cute. 
This was $4 at a local boutique. I've had this for many years, probably 15 to 18 years, something like that. I got this at Forever 21 and I still have it. I love this thing. It's um very Victorian. Ooh, what is the name of that style? Not filigree. I know as soon as I cut off this tape, I'll remember. Um, but, and I'll often wear this on my jean jackets. I love this. And then this one I got at a thrift store. Isn't this beautiful? It just looks so expensive. It looks so chic, but I got this at a thrift store on sale for less than seven bucks, six dollars and some change. And I think it is, it's one of my favorites that I own. How pretty is it? Can you imagine this on my jean jacket or on a hat or even sometimes I'll wear brooches in my hair. Brooches to me are a fantastic way to make an outfit more stylish. And another one of my favorite things to do with brooches is to use them to close cardigans that don't have buttons. So if I want to, um, I'll put it, I have an example, so I'll put in a picture. If I want to just have a little I don't know if I just want to have it a little closed, maybe have the illusion of a v-neck or, um, or of a pullover. I will wear this as the closure instead of um, sewing buttons in or having buttons put on. Even if the cardigan has buttons, a lot of times I will close them with a brooch, which just makes it interesting and just to me makes it more stylish. And I spent six fifty, I think. It was definitely less than $7 on this. I mean, what a great way to bring style into your outfit. So that is it. I hope this video made sense. I felt like it was sort of rambling um, because my brain is a little bit of the entropy train, um, but I hope it made sense. And I hope that you got some inspiration or some thoughts as to things that you can do to zhuzh up your outfits and make them feel more stylish to you without feeling like you have to go out and rob a bank to do it. Like I said, no problem with high-end clearly I love high-end but I just think that style can be found everywhere and so I just wanted to do this video as sort of my shout out to being stylish and fashionable with whatever you want if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up apparently that helps me so that would be really awesome and please don't forget to subscribe I do have a goal of getting a hundred subscribers by the end of the year Thank you so much for stopping by and watching me. I hope this video made sense. Please feel free to leave um, comments or questions or suggestions below. I did just get my first video request and so I'm going to work on that. It's very exciting. I hope that you have a good day, good rest of your week, and I'll see you next time. Peace,